Could you tell us about the phase three, where it is now? I understand it was so, a press release recently. Right, for week 24. So uh, in the trial, usually it's up to week 48 where the last patient uh, will be done. It's all, it's done, I would say. They're still looking at the analysis, preliminary analysis. You're gonna hear more about the week 24 data uh, probably in coming some of the meeting, the uh, national meeting or international meeting, they're coming. And hopefully we need to delve into this result and see really what we achieved. But at least it met the primary endpoint, which is, was a great news for all of us. So in terms of management and toxicities yeah. that, I mean, every drug has a toxicity. Is there anything our listeners should know about this drug if it becomes available in terms of tricks and management? Actually, you know, the only thing is in the trial, uh, we know that it can uh, interact with cyclosporin. Uh, so we had... It's another know, one. So, so what? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah for, for the patient on yeah. Tacro or yeah, not on uh -huh. cyclosporin, they got yeah. the 480 milligram, which is a higher dose yeah. uh, based on some in vitro modeling. And the one on cyclosporin, they get the regular dose, 240 milligram once a day, or the, the 240 milligram once a day. Other than that, to be honest with you, we enroll lots of patients on this uh, and looking at the safety data no signal, at least no myelotoxicity uh, when you compare it to placebo and no nephrotoxicity that we worry about when you compare it to placebo, but more to come. Uh, yeah, and I, I think we, we're, transplanters are become pharmacologists during yes. the, that two month period. I don't think we'll uh, be you know, troubled in the slightest by, okay, it's another med I'm juggling here, yeah. no problem. Yeah. Well, uh, this has been extremely informative. I, I know I've learned a lot. I, I know that I'm still not gonna be a transplanter I'm pretty certain of that, but I'm happy to know that you guys are taking care of these patients. But before we end this discussion, I'd like to get final thoughts uh, from each of our panelists. So let me start with you, Dr. Chamali. So I would say, you know, prevention is very important for any kind of infection. We want to keep this patient alive in order to get their transplant to go through this, you know, this hard period uh, of their life. And, you know, it, it really saddens us when we see patients dying from infection. You know, we have to do more to prevent this infection. You know, if they get relapse and they die from their cancer, what can you do? Trying your best to keep them in remission. That's but on for us. us. Yeah, that's, on, that's, yeah. that's on us. But for us, it's like a really huge responsibility to keep this patient, uh, you know, to prevent this infection from going. And there's other infection control measure also, from hand hygiene to isolation precaution, have to keep in mind. We don't want to give our patient infection in the hospitals or in the outpatient department or the clinic. So. Uh, we take it very seriously, and our staff take it seriously. Everyone should take it very seriously. Well, thank you. And Dr. Levis? Mark? So uh, I make no secret of the fact that I think transplant is the most effective anti-leukemia anti therapy that I can get. And I have been heartened to see, first, the introduction of the mold active azoles, how that dramatically improved things, uh, and such that I could transplant seemingly anybody Still with this CMV kind of hanging over our heads, I remain quite heartened to see we're gonna make a new advance in that. And we can truly focus on the relapse issue. Yes. Um, so uh, I think this is a very exciting uh, potential development. Well, uh, thank both of you for your contributions, not only to this discussion, but to the field in general. On behalf of our panel, we thank you for joining us and we hope you found this peer exchange discussion to be useful and informative. Thank you.